friends uh, today my topic on prosthodontics is on facebook the vital facebook is a vital tool in determining the inclination of maxilla orientation of the maxilla towards the plane located by two condylar rods on the posterior as the posterior reference points and uh, condylar heads on as the posterior reference points and uh, and uh, Infraorbital foramen as the anterior reference point and transferring this same relationship to the articulator. And this is the definition given by the Bauscher. And uh, this is uh, another definition given by the Hartfeld. There is a relationship of maxilla to the uh, Facebook is a caliper like device used to record the relationship of maxilla to the temporal mandibular joint. This is the actual definition given by the GPT 8. This is the most important definition that is. Facebook is the caliper like instrument used to record the spatial relationship of maxillary arch to some anatomic reference points in the cranium and then transfer this relationship to the articulator. It also orients the dental cast in the same relationship to the opening axis of the articulator. And this is the important definition. And actually, Facebook is invented by George B. Snow. The modern, the prototype for the modern Facebook is given by George B. Snow. And these are actually the parts of the face bow. The first one is the U-shaped frame. Then it is the container rods or earpiece. Then the white four. Then the locking device. And then comes the third point, third reference point. And this can be either an asium related assembly or orbital point, orbital pointer pin. This differs from differs in different types of face bows. And this is actually the U-shaped frame. This is the U-shaped frame. It forms the main frame of the face bow. All other components are attached to this frame. Testance from TMJ on it attached from TMJ on one side of the face to the temporomandibular joint on the opposite side of the face. Actually this uh, horizontal rod should be 3 to 5 millimeter in front of the frontal uh, plane of the face in order to avoid contact with the face. And this is the condylar rods. This is two metallic rods on either side of the free end of the U-shaped frame. And it contacts the skin over the temporomandibular joint. These are the two condylar rods. Later. Some face bows have earpiece attached to this part uh, and uh, in which is attached to the external rotary meatus face bow. The condylar rods are attached to the condyle or the skin of the mandible. And this is the bite bow. And this is a U-shaped uh, plate uh, which is attached to the occlusal ring when recording the orientation or relation. It is attached by means of a stem. This is the U shaped plate and uh, it is attached to the occlusal ring. Uh, and, and this is the rod which is called a stem which attaches to the U shaped frame. This pipe work to the U shaped frame. And this is the locking device. This is the locking device. This part of face bow has to Fix the bite fork to the U-shaped frame firmly after recording the orientation or relation. Actually, this is a locking device. And there are three locking devices in earpiece type of face bow. One is to uh, lock the bite fork to the uh, U-shaped frame. Another one, another lock device is for uh, locking the condylar rods here. And another one is for locking the auditory pin. It, it is somewhat around here. There's three locking devices in the earpiece type of face bow. And then comes the third reference point. And then comes the third reference point. Uh, it is used to it is used to orient the face bow assembly to the anatomical reference point on the face along with the two condylar reference point. It varies in different face bow. Example the orbital pointer and nose piece in the nasal related assembly. This the third reference point is actually uh, anterior reference point. It uh, along with the two posterior reference point forms the plane, uh, and it uh, varies from face bow to face bow. In the witness type of face bow, it is the nasion uh, at the na nasion gate at the nasion related assembly. But in earpiece type of face bow, it is the infraorbital notch. Uh, uh, to which the orbital point of pin points. Uh, that is, uh, phase 4 is classified into arbitrary phase 4 and kinematic phase 4. Arbitrary phase 4 
is again divided into fascia type phase 4 and herpes type phase 4. And uh, it is also divided in the, with the reference to the uh, third point of reference that is with the uh, NASA relator or with the orbital indicator. This is the arbitrary phase 4. Uh, the hinge axis is approximately located in this type of the hinge axis is approximately located in this type of phase 4 is commonly used for complete danger construction. Excuse me. Is commonly used for complete danger construction. This type of phase 4 generally locate the two hinge axis within a range of 5 mm. So that is a, from the name itself we can say that it is, it is only approximately locates or arbitrarily rotates the hinge axis. This is used for complete danger construction and this type of phase 4 generally locate the true hinge axis within a range of 5 mm. And this is the definition that is it is a device used to relate the maxillary cast to the condylar elements of the articulator using average anatomic landmarks to estimate the position of transverse horizontal axis on the face that is uh, the maxillary relationship of the maxilla to the uh, uh, anatomic reference points of the skull uh, uh, which is transferred as the condylar elements of the articulator using average anatomic landmarks to estimate the position of the transverse horizontal axis that is uh, the hinge axis on the face the, the position of the hinge axis is actually recorded arbitrarily using this phase form is al also called as average axis phase form uh, this uses arbitrary or approximate points on the face as the posterior points uh, and the condylar rods are positioned on these points the arbitrary points on the face or approximately Approximate points of the face are located in the fascia type of phase 4. Uh, the, uh, these are the positive reference points and the, uh, it is located on the condyle over the skin of the PNJ. The condylar uh, rods are positioned here. As, locate, as the located hinge axis is arbitrary, occlusal discrepancies may be produced in the dangers which can be corrected by minor occlusal adjustment during the insertion of the danger. This is the fascia type of phase form. This uh, is the fascia type of phase form, and uh, the, uh, the, it utilizes the approximate points on the skin or the temporomandibular joint as the posterior reference points. And the points are located by measuring certain anatomic landmarks on the face. That is, this is the U shaped frame, this is the locking device, this is the pipe fork with the uh, plane. Uh, the plate which connects to the occlusal rim and the stem is here and uh, this is the locking device again in this type of phase there is fascia type of phase the center of condylar rotation is arbitrarily marked 13 millimeter anterior to the middle of the tragus of the ear on the cantotragal line that is the condylar rotation center of condylar rotation is arbitrarily marked as anterior to the 13 millimeter anterior to the Tragus, middle of the tragus of the end on the canto tragal line. This so, canto tragal line is a line from the outer canvas of the eye to the uh, uh, tragus, middle of the tragus of the ear. On this line, uh, the 13 millimeter anteriorly, the a point is marked arbitrarily. This type of phase The condylar nodes of the phase four are placed on this point. In the fascia type of phase four. Uh, the main disadvantage is that. Uh, as the face is placed on the skin, which is movable, there is tendency for the condylar rods to get displaced. Condylar rods may get displaced in some, some occasions and it also requires an assistant to hold the face bow in place. And the, then comes the earpiece type of face bow. It uses uh, the earpiece type of face bow, it uses the external auditory meatus as an arbitrary reference point which is aligned with the ear pieces similar to the those of the cystopia the external rotary meatus is taken as the arbitrary posterior reference point and the ear pieces are arranged uh, like that of a cystoscope onto this uh, reference point accurate relationship for the most it is, uh, gives accurate relationship of the past uh, to the uh, hinge axis on most of the diagnostic and prostrative procedures the main advantage is that it is very simple to use 
and it does not require measurements on the face it, and it does not moves with the movement of the skin is accurate as other face walls. It provides an average anatomical dimension between the external outer meatus and the horizontal axis of the mandible. It, uh, relationship between external outer meatus and the horizontal axis of the mandible is this established. And the disadvantage, uh, sometimes uh, the, because of the arbitrary position is chosen, an error of 0.2 millimeter from the axis can be expected. Uh, uh, when coupled with the use of a thick interoclusal cord made at an increased vertical dimension, that is when the bite fork is uh, as, uh, incorporated with the interoclusal cord made at an increased vertical dimension, it can lead to some considerable inaccuracy. This is one of the disadvantages. And it is another type, another type of earpiece type of spring board. Uh, now discuss, let us discuss about different types of face balls. Uh, is a type of earpiece face balls, spring ball. Is a type of earpiece space rock uh, which is made up of spring steel and simple springs uh, which open and closes to various head widths. Most commonly used space rock. This is one of the most commonly used space It is also called as canal space rock. It is made up of simple spring steel and uh, it, uh, it is, uh, can be uh, deferred according to the various head widths. This instrument is designed. Sorry. Uh, this instrument is uh, designed to orient the occlusal plane to the Frankfurt horizontal plane by means of a third of its form. So here, the occlusal plane can be uh, measured in, in terms with the Frankfurt horizontal plane. The Frankfurt horizontal plane is a plane which passes through the uh, two chorions on the both sides of the head and skull and the uh, orbital. This is the chorion orbital plane. It is also called as the eye ear plane. Or higher plane. The advantage is that one piece of uh, uh, the one piece design of the bow eliminates moving parts and veneers problems encountered with other models. It is very easy and efficient to use, and the parts are sterilizable and both the direct and indirect mounting capability. These are the advantages uh, of a spring bow. Uh, the main disadvantage is the inability to measure the intercondylar distance. It cannot be measured as in case of the thickness space bore. Should bore. It is also another type of earpiece type of base bore. It allows maxillary arcs to be transferred to the articulator without the physically attaching base bore to the articulator. So, base bore need not be attached to the articulator. Uh, otherwise, uh, even without uh, attaching base bore, the maxillary arcs can be transfer to the articulator. It also relates, us, uh, relates maxillary arc to the FH plane. Another type of ERP type of piece is slidematic face ball. It is used with the Dinara articulator. It has an electronic device that gives reading denoting one half of the intercondylar distance. The thing is that this, uh, this uh, gives an electronic device and the which denotes a reading which gives the one half of the Intracondylar distance, it can be measured with, uh, with, by means of slide matching face bow. The next is the picnic face bow. This is also another type of ERP face bow. Yeah, the specialty is that it has a built in hinge axis locator. That, is, it, that means it automatically locates the hinge axis when ear pieces are placed in the standard order in ears. Hinge axis can be located automatically. And it has a nascent nasion related assembly with a plastic nose piece. This is a specialty of this type of witness type of face flow. This advanced type of face flow. And then comes the kinematic face flow. It is, it is also called as injaxis or actual value face flow. It is used to determine and locate the exact injaxis points. It is uh, uh, injaxis of the mandible can be determined by a clutch that is segmented impression trail like device which is attached to the mandibular feet. That is, uh, in kinematic phase, we have to fabricate a clutch and which is attached to the mandibular feet and by means of suitable rigid material such as impression compound. Definition. Uh, and phase four with, uh, kinematic phase four is a phase four with adjustable caliper rings, which is used to locate the transverse horizontal axis of the mandible. It locates the transverse horizontal axis of mandible. It locates true or exact center of condylar rotation or, or, or transverse horizontal axis. It is usually preferred for full mouth reconstructions. 
and it is usually used with fully adjustable articulators. And here, uh, the uh, it is uh, almost similar to that of the Asia type of baseball because the condyla rods of the kinematic baseball are placed on to the uh, uh, skin over the PMJ over the condyla uh, heads and uh, some graph are placed on the skin and the points act, uh, points are recorded on the graph uh, by which the true center of condyla rotation is measured. It is indicated. It is indicated when it is critical to precisely reproduce the exact opening and closing moment of the patient to the articulator. Here the closing and opening moment should be restricted within 12 mm. Otherwise, translation occurs. Pure rotation occurs only up to 12 degree of opening of closing and it is up to 21 mm millimeter of interincisal opening or 12 degree of uh, opening, 12 degree of opening of uh, and closing of the mouth. It's a drawback is that this gives extensive chair side type and expensive is fairly indicated for routine articulators with prostatic procedures. Plane of orientation. A plane of orientation, this is uh, here to understand this uh, first sentence. Uh, the maxillary cast in the articulator is the baseline from which all of the relationship starts. Uh, so, therefore, it should be positioned in the space by identifying three points. These three points uh, uh, means the two posterior points and one anterior point. The two posterior points of the maxillae and, uh, on the maxillae and one point located anterior to it. The posterior points are referred to as posterior reference points and the anterior point is referred to as anterior reference point. The spatial plane formed by joining these anterior and posterior reference points is called as the plane of orientation. This is the plane of orientation. This one anterior reference point and two posterior reference points. These three points join to form a plane of orientation to which the base of the maxilla is related. Prior to aligning the face bow on the face, posterior reference points and the anterior reference points must be located and marked. This is very important. And the posterior reference points. Some of the posterior reference points, reference points can be discussed. The position of the terminal hinge axis on either side of the face is generally taken as the post, uh, posterior reference points. Uh, the terminal hinge axis position on either side of the face uh, is taken as the posterior reference points. Uh, it is uh, one, uh, one thing is the Byron's point. Uh, this is 13 millimeter anterior to the posterior margin of the tragus of the ear. This is the posterior margin of the tragus of the ear. Uh, actually this one. And 13 millimeter anterior to it. Actually this comes to this point. On a line from the center of the tragus extend to the corner, corner of the eye. This is the canthotragal line. This uh, is the canthotragal line. And uh, this is 13 mm from the posterior margin of the tragus of the ear. Or the canthotragal line. That is the bare on spot. And a bed strong point. Bed strong point. Uh, this is 10 mm anterior to the center of the spherical insert of the external autopomiatus. This is the external autopomiatus and it is 10 mm anterior uh, to the external autopomiatus and 7 mm below the Frankfurt horizontal plane. So two planes. Uh, the, uh, from the uh, two uh, landmarks are uh, 10 mm from anterior to the external autopomiatus and 7 mm below the Frankfurt horizontal plane. Again, Frankfurt horizontal plane passes through the Orion and the orbital. And this is the bedstrom point is found to be the most frequently closest to the hinge axis. Found to be the most frequently closest to the hinge axis. And Bayron point is the next most accurate posterior point of reference. So these are the main two posterior points of reference. Uh, another one is Gaisi. Uh, Gaisi's point of reference uh, is Gaisi. Uh, this is 13 millimeter in front of the most upper part of the western nodal meatus on a line passing to the upper canvas of the eye. Uh, this is uh, uh, external in front of the external nodal 13 millimeter uh, on the most upper part of the external nodal meatus and it comes to a line passing through the uh, upper canvas of the eye. This method was proposed by Gaisi, Hanau, Snow, and Gilmer and this is the most commonly used point to Gaisi's point. And then comes the importance of anterior reference point. Anterior point of triangle, uh, a triangular spatial plane, 
So in which plane in the head will become the plane of reference when the post process is fabricated. And this gives the orientation, this along with the posterior reference points gives the orientation uh, for uh, uh, on, the, uh, on which plane of the head will become the uh, plane of reference uh, for which the process is has to be fabricated. When these three points are used, the position can be repeated. That is uh, one of the significance uh, is that uh, when these three points, two posterior and one anterior reference point are used, this position can be repeated. And uh, it is helpful in visualizing the anterior teeth and their occlusion in the articulator in the, according to this frame of reference when fabricating the processes. Next is orbitate. It is uh, one of the anterior point of reference. Uh, different anterior point of reference can be now discussed. Uh, one is the orbital. Uh, in the skull, orbital is the lowest point of infraorbital foramen. Uh, orbital is the lowest point on the infraorbital rim. Uh, it can be palpated on the patient overlying the tissue and the skin. And one orbital and the two posterior reference points uh, will determine the horizontal axis of the patient and it will define the axis orbital plane. And the axis orbital plane, uh, that is two posterior reference point and this orbital when uh, used as a plane, it is called as uh, axis orbital plane. This axis orbital plane. Uh, this one is the uh, Frankfurt horizontal plane. This one is the, the Frankfurt horizontal plane. So it is also passed to the Orion and to the orbital. And uh, this is the orbital, axis orbital plane. This also passes through the orbital, but uh, it is below the Frankfurt horizontal plane. This axis orbital plane. And another reference point is the Nasion minus 23 mm. The uh, Nasion is the deepest part of the midline depression just below the eye eyebrows. It is at the center of the uh, uh, frontal region of the skull. It is a midline depression and it, uh, it, it is just below the eyebrows. It is uh, termed uh, by the by Sikkar. And Nasion gate or posterior position of the face bow fits into this depression. The Nasion gate fits into this depression. Uh, into this uh, uh, depression and uh, it is used along with the mid-miss articulator. Axion gate can be moved in and out but cannot be moved up and down and from its attachment. And the sixth dummy, uh, the crossbar. The U-shaped frame or uh, the crossbar of the U-shaped frame is located 23 millimeter below the point of the Nasion pointer. That is this picture. So tells this is an axion. Uh, the, 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 we can see the depression. This is a depression, and it is between the two eyebrows. And this is an axion. And below this 23 mm below this axion gate is the horizontal uh, condylar rod. Oh, uh, condylar rod of the U-shaped frame. Uh, uh, this is an axion gate, and 23 millimeter below is the uh, crossbar of the U-shaped frame. Crossbar of the U-shaped frame. We hear this crossbar of the U-shaped frame is taken as the anterior point of reference. In the face is positioned anteriorly by the Nasion gate, the crossbar will be the approximate region at the orbit. And again, this crossbar is approximate to the orbital, the previously described anterior reference point orbital. And this face crossbar, not the Nasion gate, is the actual anterior reference point located. Here the crossbar. And here the crossbar, this crossbar is 23 millimeter from the Nasion gate down and it uh, is almost in line with the orbital. Orbital of the patient uh, it will be around this and this uh, serves as the anterior point of reference. Then one is the ala of the nose. Ala of the nose is marked on a uh, rough and light ala of the nose is marked on the patient and the anterior reference point of the face bow is set as this ala of the nose as the reference. This method uses the canvas plane instead of the fan or some plane as the plane of orientation. And the canvas plane is the ala tragus line. From the tragus of the ear to the ala of the nose. This is canvas plane. Here this it is taken as the plane of orientation. This is the uh, canvas line. This is the canvas line ala of nose to the tragus of the ear. The ala tragus line it is also called as ala tragus line or canvas line. And this is of crucial plane. This is a closer plane should be parallel to the halatrius line or the canvas line.
ഇതെന്താ ഓർബിറ്റേൽ മൈനസ് സെവൻ എം എം ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ആക്ച്വലി ഓർബിറ്റേൽ ഓർബിറ്റേൽ ഇസ് ഇയർ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് മൈനസ് സെവൻ എം എം കംസ് ടു ഡൗൺ ടു ദിസ് ദിസ് പ്ലെയിൻ ഓൾമോസ്റ്റ് പാരൽ ടു ദ ട്രാൻസ്പോർട്ട് വേർസ് ഓൺ ടു ദൻ അനദർ പോയിന്റ് ഓഫ് പ്രോപ്പറൻസ് ഇസ് ദ ഫോർട്ടി ത്രീ മില്ലി മീറ്റർ സുപ്പീരിയർ ഫ്രം ദ ലോവർ ബോർഡർ ഓഫ് ദ അപ്പർ this plane represent is a is a representative of the dinar reference plane and dinar phase bond uses this reference bond this 14 meter is superior to the lower border of the and phase bond transfer and a different type of phase bond that can be utilized with hanau articulator hanau articulator is a uh, fully adjustable articulator and uh, uh, it, uh, different types of phase bonds can be used are fascia type of phase bond arbitrary erp type of phase bond both are arbitrary phase bond another uh, type of phase bond such as tulbo spring bond and kinematic phase bond or so this phase bond can be used with the hanau articulator the phase bond that can be used with the rhythmic articulator are quick mount erp phase bond and the kinematic phase bond and phase bond that can be used with the dinar articulator are fascia type and erp type of phase bond and uh, this is that uh, attachment of the uh, compression compound to the bike core here uh, this shows the mounting of the mounting of the face core on the patient and uh, the compression compound is attached to the bike core and uh, it is positioned over the maxillary teeth so the bike core uh, with the stem uh, this is the bike core uh, and this is the stem uh, is at uh, positioned over the maxillary teeth is removed uh, from the mouth when is pulled and the indentation of the teeth are uh, found here so it is used in the fabrication of fixed partial dentures and, and the record base is well adapted uh, here the record base is well adapted well adapted the core base on to the uh, compression compound and with bite fork in the position uh, uh, phase voice graded on to the stem of the bite fork and the and here the bite fork with the phase four is placed on the patient's mouth uh gated and the uh, it is gated onto the patient's mouth bite fork with the stem and the ear piece uh, assembly is a piece into the external ear piece assembly is uh, gated into the external artery near the openings on the both sides here the, the box is uh, into the ear stem rotor here the ear piece is uh, made into placed is placed and the orbital pointer is positioned here the orbital pointer so orbital pointer is positioned uh, as the uh, relation relation to the anterior reference point that is the intra orbital notch for the orbital the thumb screws are tightened here the, uh, the thumb screw is one locking device is tightened the thumb screw is tightened to maintain the spatial relationship between the face bow and the bite bow here the alignment is checked parallelism alignment is uh, parallelism of the condylar rods bite bow and the uh, orbital pointer three things are checked alignment of the three things are checked parallelism are checked the face bow assembly along with the bite bow is removed from the mouth and positioned on the articulator and this is the clinical procedure that is the maxillary of loose rim is inserted into the patient's mouth and pondered a point 30 mm from the tragus of the ear or the cantorhinal line is marked on the uh, patient's face and the bite fork is then heated and attached to the anterior maxillary of loose rim free mm above the incisal plane and parallel to the incisal plane the face of loose rim with the attached bite fork is inserted into the patient's mouth then the u shaped frame with the locking device is attached to the uh, the u shaped frame after uh, after the uh, bite fork and the oclusal rim is placed on the patient's mouth the u shaped frame the locking device is attached to the stem of the bite fork and the condylar rods are unlocked and the condylar heads are placed on the right and left side of the patient's face on the previously marked points on the uh, patient's face then the third point of reference or infra orbital notch is palpated this is on and and the anti orbital pointer pin of the face bow is placed and this is the anterior point of reference so the two posterior point of reference and the anterior point of reference are marked and the uh, uh, pointer orbital pointer is located to the anterior point of reference and the condylar rods are placed at the posterior point of reference 
When the polylar rod readings are then equalized on both sides and the locking screws are tightened, also the locking screw of the orbital pointer is also tightened. And once the sender apparatus uh, as shown in the figure uh, previously, once sender apparatus is in position, the uh, three things, the polylar rods, orbital pointer pin, and the white fork are verified for alignment, moment, and parallelism. Then the mandibular occlusive ring may be used. Then mandibular occlusive ring may be used to stabilize the maxillary ring. The phase 4 is then securely removed from the patient by loosening only the pondylar screws. That is, from the posterior reference points, the uh, screws are loosened and the phase 4 report is removed. And this completes the phase 4 transfer and then it is referred to the transfer to the articulator. Then comes the zeroing of the articulator. The incisal gate pin is adjusted to correct the jaw suppression. Incisal gate pin is adjusted uh, to the correct jaw suppression. And the anterior stop screws are tightened first. Here, the articulator is the Hanau's Hanau articulator, and similar, similar to the uh, mean value articulator, there is a incisal gate pin on the center. And it has to be adjusted to correct jaw suppression, and it has to be tightened by using an anterior stop screw. Then, a horizontal pondylar inclination. In the Hanau phase 4, we have the we can set the horizontal pondylar inclination using a lock nut, and it is set approximately at the 14 degree, and the, on the top of the Hanau. Uh, articulator, we can adjust the Bennett angle to be 20 degree, and uh, this is uh, actually uh, followed after the proclusive reports are taken from the patient in case of uh, uh, complete danger patients. And the phase four mounting on the articulator here, we have to notice the following points that is, condylar rods uh, are attached to the auditory pin, the condylar rods of the phase four are attached to the auditory pin of the articulator. And bite fork of the phase bow is uh, supported using a tilt bar, tilt support bar. The orbital pin of the phase bow is in is in orientation with the orbital axis plane indicator in the articulator. The incisal pin is made at zero on calibration, and the incisal gate table has to be set horizontally. Then uh, the plaster mix. Then plaster mix. Uh, uh, the upper member of the articulator is swung open, the plaster is poured onto the maxillary cast, and the uh, upper member is closed uh, as the incisal pin touches the fully touches the incisal gate table, and the plaster is allowed to set. So this is uh, uh, this way the relationship of the maxillary cast to the hinge axis is transferred to the articulator. And then comes the kinematic method of locating hinge axis. Now, uh, here we discussed about the uh, arbitrary phase 4 record, then uh, phase 4 transfer. Now, uh, we are uh, recording the, uh, discussing about the kinematic method of locating hinge axis. Here, there is first the fabrication of the clutch has to be made, then attachment of the clutch to the lower teeth. The clutch is somewhat this, uh, this, this is the clutch, and the clutch is attached to the lower teeth. Uh, the assembled the hinge axis locator. The hinge axis locator is then assembled and attached to the attached side ends of the hinge axis locator, the close bar in the mounting corner. And this is the hinge axis locator. Uh, the side ends of the uh, hinge axis locator is attached to the mounting column. This is the mounting column. Attached to this entire assembly of the hinge axis locator is attached to the stem of the plug strip. This entire assembly. This entire assembly of hinge axis locator, the mount, uh, 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 mounting column is attached to the stem of the clutch. This is the stem of the clutch tray. And then this, uh, this entire assembly is attached to the stem. And then mark the approximate center of the condyle on the subject's face. Then, uh, then uh, on the subject's face, the approximate center of condylar rotation. Condylar rotation of approximate leg is marked from the patient's face around here, somewhat around here. And then adjust the hinge axis locator accordingly and place a graph paper to trace the opening and closing moments of the uh, patient's, uh, patient's opening and closing moments and the exact location of the uh, condylar uh, uh, rotation. Exact, uh, center of the condylar rotation is then in on this graphic paper and the graph paper and the location of the hinge axis point is established. 
this is the flux this is the flux with the stem and uh, fabrication of flux with the stem and this is it is attached to the patient and uh, this is the injectors locator uh, it is attached to the clutch and the, the, the uh, graft surface is placed on the patient's face here and uh, using this uh, injectors locator marks the point when the patient opens and closes the mouth and uh, the exact location of the center of pondylar rotation is marked and the two injectors is measured and the indications of phase flow the phase flow is indicated in when balanced occlusion is desired and uh, for the uh, fabrication of balanced complete denture and another indication of phase flow is the when the vertical dimension is subjected to change so so, so i hope you understood the concept of phase flow uh, next time i will be coming with another topic